Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! It was the report they told us we couldn't see, showing widespread and systematic mistreatment of thousands of small business owners. Customers were told RBS NatWest's Global Restructuring Group was a turnaround division to help improve their fortunes. But a leaked report for the regulator, the FCA, found it was a profit centre with an intentional, coordinated strategy to put the bank's interests ahead of its customers. Many of those customers were ruined, and the report found the board of RBS responsible for their distress. But the FCA wouldn't publish it, saying it was legally barred. Now it's come out, Newsnight has spoken to a hotel developer ruined in the scandal, who says that uh, it deprived him of vital evidence that could have helped him find justice. Here's Andy Verity. You won't find any names of small business owners in the damning leaked report into RBS's so-called turnaround division, the Global Restructuring Group, the dozens of ruined customers whose stories it documents have been stripped of identifying features. But now we can put a name and a face to one anonymous number. Case Extract 38, Chris Richardson. After banking with us for so many years, we were sure that they were there to assist us. But no, they, they just had their own agenda. And their agenda was anything but turnaround, let me tell you. Well, everything, all of this, the furniture, the, uh, in all the staircase, this is how we designed it. We took Chris back to the hotel he and his business partner had set up, only to have it taken from them. They would bought a run-down site in Sittingbourne, Kent, ploughed in their own money and agreed more than £4 million of borrowing from RBS Nat West to transform it. We were 10 days from opening, we, we had the Kent Teachers Awards booked here, we had a couple of weddings straight away, and that was before we'd even opened the doors, and they were confirmed bookings. Um, so it was fantastic. I mean, uh, Sittingbourne never had a hotel like this. We, we, we was having it uh, seated for 124 people. The <laughs> bank sees things differently and says the business was in serious financial difficulty, needing significant additional costs to complete. It moved them to its so-called turnaround division, the Global Restructuring Group. While it's highly critical of the bank in many respects, the report for the FCA said the transfer was appropriate given the business's financial position. Well, this is the ballroom. I mean, everything's the same in here now um, as it was. Uh, nothing. Four changed. months earlier, the hotel had been valued at £7.7 .7 million once it was up and running. But now, a new valuer, Knight Frank, was brought in and valued it on a different basis, two and a half to three million to sell immediately without the extra work still needed. On that much lower valuation, Chris and his partner were in breach of their loan terms. You know, this is where... They'd done the deed and sacked everybody in this very room. Within weeks, he'd lost control of the hotel he'd been developing, staff were sacked, and he was thrown off the premises. Chris and his partner were ruined. Could not believe what's going on, and I can't explain the pressure on your chest when something like that happens. Yeah, you, you feel you can't breathe properly, you know, you shake. You don't sleep, you know, it's, you know, it's not until you go through it, you, you can't explain it. You can't explain the feeling. The final blow for Chris came when the hotel RBS says was in serious financial difficulty ended up in the hands of its own property division, West Register, and opened its doors to guests. West Register later sold it at a loss. These, these are my main files that I use pretty much every day. Since then, Chris has spent years fighting the bank, drawing on a room full of evidence to try to prove his hotel had been unfairly taken. With money running low, he had to stand up in court himself against expensive legal teams. In 2013, Chris's wife Karen died of cancer, aged just 45, leaving him and three daughters. She urged him before she died not to give up his struggle. Years later, he met Dee, his new partner, what happened in 2010 still dominates their life. And it's really got to the stage where the kids, you know, the kids, <laughs> if, if the phone goes or some account, as soon as they know I'm doing paperwork, that's it. They leave me alone. Um, you know, and it's not fair on them. 
It's not fair on anyone. <laughs> Chris's claims against RBS NatWest were dismissed by the courts. Last year, another court was asked to make him bankrupt, and he was. But then, a breakthrough. New information that Chris says casts fresh light on what happened. The Parliamentary Committee has taken the unusual step of using its powers to force the financial regulator to hand over a report into the mistreatment of business customers by Royal Bank of Scotland. The financial, the financial regulator had asked consultants to look into the bank's turnaround division, but for a year and a half the FCA wouldn't publish it, citing legal constraints. An explosive finding that nearly 9 out of 10 customers the report reviewed suffered inappropriate treatment was kept from the public. After versions of the report were leaked first to the BBC and then put on the internet, MPs demanded the report and published it in full. And Chris came across his own case. As I was turning them over, this page sort of left my hand and flew across the, uh, and floated onto the carpet. And I can't believe it because when I picked that up, uh, it was page 246 and I was looking at it and as I was reading it, I was going, that's my case. That's my case. I just dropped the papers and I was walking around. And as I read it, I was fuming. I was shaking. The report revealed that back in 2010, unbeknownst to Chris at the time, a third party was influencing what happened to his business, the part of the bank that ended up buying his hotel, West Register. Ten days after his business had been transferred to the Global Restructuring Group, an official from West Register joined a meeting with the valuer and the bank to discuss his business. Chris knew West Register had been in on discussions from earlier evidence, but the report went further, quoting minutes he'd never seen showing the West Register official had talked down the hotel's value. Paul Wolfenden is a former global head of valuation at Surveyor's DTZ and an expert witness. We asked him what he thought a valuer should do when a potential purchaser seeks to influence a valuation. Ideally, he shouldn't have joined the call in the first place because if he knew that the purchaser was going to be on the, on the call, uh, he should not have joined the call. Once he knew the purchaser was on the call, he should have either refused to answer questions or rung off. Knight Frank told us the valuation process was conducted entirely properly and produced a valuation figure which was wholly accurate. In the leaked report, Chris found something more. A bank email, also never disclosed to him, revealed his turnaround manager even recommended keeping the hotel shut. If it's down to me, I would say let it remain shut, test the market, and if offers are very low, then sell to West Register. The bank did exactly what the turnaround manager suggested, dismissing other options. The bank says West Register's was the highest of six bids as a result of an open market sale. I think it's just fundamentally inappropriate because uh, why, why would the bank condone a purchaser being on the line talking values down when the bank ought to be motivated to get the highest possible price, A, to redeem as much of their loan and B, to reduce the loss of their borrower. RBS said the West Register employee in the meeting had been brought in for specialist knowledge and it didn't alter the valuation. Imagine if your mortgage lender told you your house price had dropped and it was now worth too little compared to your loan. It wants its money back and you lose control of your house. Then imagine how you'd feel if you found out later that all along your bank had a property division that was interested in buying your house and had been talking its value down. Chris Richardson's case is just one among thousands whose stories until now the bank and regulator wouldn't let you see. The mistreatment of small businesses might sound like a matter of money, of property, of faceless case numbers, but behind those numbers is a human cost to business people, their families, their health. I need to move on, you know, because I can't afford to put myself in a pit uh, and feel sorry for myself. You know, I've got to move on and live my life, but it's been very difficult with all of this going on. There's no justice and, uh, you know, I'm bankrupt and now I've got trustees in bankruptcy. Um, it's wrong, it's wrong. It's morally wrong. Andy Verity with that report. Well, RBS gave us a statement about Chris's case. They said the FCA report finds no evidence of firms being inappropriately transferred to GRG or West Register purchasing properties for a price clearly below market value or of the purchase of a property by West Register alone 
giving rise to a financial loss to the customer.